Hello, this video explains how you can uh, decode uh, CTAG packets from raw Argos data as received by the Argos satellite system into um, physical values. Now, why would you ever do that? Normally, you don't have to do that decoding yourself. You would use CWatch, it's a utility that we provide and you just point it to your account, CTAG test for us, and I enter our password. I can then update my platform list, all right, and I can update selected platforms. And as you can see here right now, it's now going through all of our uh, Argos IDs, and there's really only one that's that's active right now that we use in the manufacturing process and it'll recover all data. That allows you then, that generates a file we call it a .drl, desert star raw log file. And that becomes an input to C convert to get your uh, decoded packets or into C track to do a, um, a position estimated track. So that's how you would normally do it. And that's described in a, a different uh, video on our channel as well. Just look for C-Watch, C-Convert, uh, C-Track. And uh, so why, why, why do something else? Well, the problem with uh, C-Watch is that it uses Argos Web Services. It's online access um, to your data, but Argos Web Services provides only the last 20 days of recorded data, the last 20 day. Now, usually Sea-Watch runs in the background on, on your machine, so I can uh, uh, minimize it here. Uh, it shows up in a tray that's on my other display. You don't see that here, it's the lower right corner of the screen. And then when I click on it, um, uh, show Sea-Watch config, there it is again, and it will, get your data once every hour, connect to the uh, Argos server once an hour and get your data. But if your computer isn't running for 20 days or for whatever reason Sea-Watch has shut down, then you will have a data hole and you cannot automatically recover your data anymore. What do you do then? Well, in that case, you need to go to the, uh, the Argos website, argos-system Dot org you can type in or here they have um, extended URL and now you can get up to your last 365 days worth of data in uh, uh, Excel or CSV format let me hit this here here you can select what whatever you want to do CSV Excel is what we recommend one of those two and it kind of looks like this now what if you are going if your data might be older than 365 days, you haven't paid attention to the tag for two years, now you wanna know what's going on. Well, then you have to uh, contact uh, uh, CLS customer service and have to let them know what data you need and in what format, and you should request it in CSV format. So in the current video here, we'll go over how you can make off the uh, CSV raw data that you recovered via um, uh, the Argos website or via a uh, email to customer support at Argos. What I'll do now is I'll uh, maximize this um, uh, tab here and uh, you can see this is the raw data that you receive from uh, CLS. Uh, CLS being the service provider for Argos. And there are some data that's filled in automatically uh, for you that uh, defines the tag. This one is for tag 175957. And you know, you may ha have obtained data for a number of tags, just depends on what you did on the website or what you asked them for. It'll tell you which satellite received a particular message. So each one of these is one message from the satellite. It gives you a message date, uh, so when the message was received by the satellite, an estimated location of the tag as determined by the satellite constellation at the time of transmission. Not necessarily at the time 
when um, uh, to which this data packet refers, because it can be an archival data packet, but the time of transmission. So the tag would have been here at 23.202 degrees north and 121.573 degrees east in this particular case. The locations, by the way, are not always available. They're only available if there are enough transmissions for the satellite uh, to, to determine the location of the tag, but that's a different issue. All right, so what do you do with all these numbers? What do they mean? Well, um, for that, we will go to our decoder spreadsheet, and I will show you that here. So there's this uh, uh, Excel uh, spreadsheet that uh, you can obtain from the Desert Star website, um, or you can de send Desert Star an email. And it defines all the various packet types. And then here it defines what data is contained in each packet type. Now, Argos packets um, have uh, a length of up to 31 bytes, or as they call them, up to 31 sensors. And you can see here sensor number 31. But I say up to, so some packets are shorter. Notice these ones here and at uh, sensor number 19. You know, I should let, let me do a, a freeze here. Um, home, insert, data. Oh, what am I trying to do here? view freeze panes. That's what I was looking for. Freeze first column. So this column will now stay in place, right? So as we go to various packet types, you'll see that some of them end on uh, 16 or 19. Here we have that. You see that? Then nothing follows these. So it depends on what tag they come from. Different desert star tags send different packets. You can kind of tell by the packet name, uh, SDPT means uh, CTAG Data Packet Type. Mod Daily means actually it comes from a CTAG mod and it's a daily summary. It explains that here a little bit better. Here it says CTAG Geo2 daily summary and so on. So different tags transmit different packets and uh, uh, these packets can have various lengths. Well, how do we go from here? Well, the first thing is that you really want to do uh, uh, some sorting operations in your spreadsheet. And the first sorting that I recommend you do is by the packet identifier. Again, I'll concentrate on SDP mod daily here, the daily summary for the CTAG mod. And the first byte in each transmission is always the packet identifier. Here hex 40x means hex and here I also put it in decimal, it also happens to be decimal 4. So decimal 4 in sensor number 1 means it's a mod daily packet. Decimal 6 or hex 6 in sensor number 1, it means it's a mod SN2 packet. What is that? a raw sensor data packet. It's essentially a sensor scan and so on. And then the other fields here are the data fields, which as you can see, they are specific to the packet type. Packet type. And each data field can be one or more bytes. So a sensor value is also a byte, eight bits of information. This one here, for example, noon UTC 32, consists of four bytes, three, two, one, and zero. The final byte in most packets is the checksum. We see that here as X sum eight. You can see here it's sensor 31, but when we go to other packets, shorter packets, let me show you that here. Uh, these packets here we see at, uh, at uh, sensor 19. So the checksum is used to 
make sure the integrity of the data in the packet is okay. There's no data error. And uh, for Argos, because you have a small transmitter attack talking to a satellite out in space using a small antenna and minimum power, the error rate can be quite high. Under good conditions, 80% uh, of uh, packets received by the satellite will be good, 20% corrupted. But when a tag is in the ocean, uh, it can be a much lower percentage rate of success, 50% maybe, maybe even lower. And it seems to depend a lot on what the sea state is. Uh, as the tag bobbing in the waves, uh, you know, the, the crest of a wave might shadow the satellite or the, the tag just by the power of the, uh, the energy of the waves might submerge a little bit, uh, its antenna submerging a bit and then surfacing again. So it's very important that we then know um, uh, which data packets are correct and which ones are not. Before we go deeper into the decoding, uh, we need to understand really how data is stored uh, in uh, for CTAG devices. And looking at some data field definition here, you will see that some data fields, such as here the average daily capacitor voltage, is stored across two bytes or 16 bits. That's why here's the number 16, uh, whereas temperature is stored as 24 bits, which is three bytes. And you will see that the most significant byte always is first. Here, number two, number one, number zero. Furthermore, looking at the data word definition of these two data fields, you will see that uh, the temperature is a signed number, whereas uh, v cap is an unsigned number. So a signed number means it can be positive or negative, and an unsigned can only be positive. Now, how do we deal with this? As we do all our decoding, we have to get a little bit into math and uh, the binary system here. Um, let's take uh, just as a reminder, uh, remind ourselves how we work in the decimal system. Take the number 123 here. How can we deconstruct that? Quite simply, we can say it is also 1 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 3. So 1 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 3 equals 123. So therefore, this digit here has a value of 100, this of 10, and this of 1. In a, a equivalent sense, um, working with the uh, binary data uh, in CTAG or computer systems in general, the first byte, the least significant byte, has a, a bit value of 1, and the second byte has a bit value of 2 to the 8th power, which is 256. Why is that? Because each byte is 8 bits, and therefore the least significant bit in the next byte is um, 256 to, to the 8th, because we're shifted left bits to the 8, uh, to the, uh, 8 bits to the left. Uh, similar here, uh, this is a value of 1, this is a value of 2 to the 8th, which is 256, and this is a, a value of 2 to the 20, sorry, 2 to the 16th power, which is 65,536. That's how that works. Let's look at it um, in binary view. Here, yeah, so I go to programmer. Uh, let's look at the number 255 decimal. Is binary, all eight bits are one, right? So you see that, and um, that is the highest value in a byte. 
How about when we are looking at negative values? How could they be represented? Let's first just assume it's just a single byte. Well, we can find out by saying, so hang on, let me clear this out and see if this works on it. 0 minus 1 equals, and it would be all 1 bits. So 0, all 0 bits minus 1 would be all 1 bits. So that's uh, how you get a, a negative number if I add uh, one, uh, subtract uh, another one from that, then it's all ones, however many ones you have. They use uh, what price, um, but quite a large number. And then the least significant bit is zero. If it was a single byte representation, you would have seven ones followed by a zero, and that would be minus two. Now by convention, um, uh, the the most negative number you can have is a one followed by all zeros, and for a single uh, byte value that is minus hundred twenty eight. Whereas the most positive number you can have is a zero followed by all ones, which for um, uh, a single byte is 127. So a single byte value has a range from, if it's signed, from minus 128 to plus 127. That's a total of 256 possible combinations. Now let's apply what we learned to do some very simple decoding with calculator just to become more familiar with it. Here we are looking at a, a more daily packet in the second column, packet identifier 4, and notice how sensor val, uh, sensors 11 and 12 or bytes 11 and 12 are 13 and 107 uh, respectively. Let me see if I can pull up what 11 and 12 are and uh, here data packets I already highlighted it 11 and 12 are the V cap uh, AVG is 16 uh, that's the average capacitor voltage looking at the data word definition we can see it's a two byte value it's unsigned with a reporting resolution of 0 0.001 volt okay that gives us the information we need Let's go back here, pull up our calculator here, and what do we have here? What's this value? We have um, 13 times 2 to the 8th power plus 107, the least significant byte, 3435. The reporting resolution is 0 0.001 volt per step, so therefore to convert to volt, I need to divide it by a thousand. And our decoded value is 3.435 volt. Let's see if that's correctly. Um, later on in my spreadsheet here, 3.435 volt. So that worked. So that was a simple... Uh, unsigned um, uh, conversion, unsigned number. Now I'm going to go to a new one that I hadn't highlighted before. Uh, sensors 24 and 25. Um, let's go to our decoding key. 24 and 25 in mod daily. I highlighted them here already. Uh, our depth, minimum depth for the day. Again, a 2-byte or 16-bit value. Now I go to data word definition. See if I can get some more information about this. Here it is. Depth daily minimum. 2-byte, 0.1-meter resolution, and it is a signed value. So let's try to decode this now. All right, 255 and 207. 
So if it was an unsigned value, what we would have here is 255 times 2 to the 8th power plus 207 equals 65,487. But it is in fact a signed, not an unsigned value. And so what we need to do is to subtract from this value 2 to the 16th power. Why 2 to the 16th power? Well, because a value of minus 1 is all bits once, which is really 2 to the 16th power minus 1. So if I subtract 2 to the 16th power from that, I should end up at minus 1. So um, I subtract 2 to the 16th power. minus 49 and we said the reporting resolution was 0 0.1 meter so therefore um, to to get to 1 meter uh, units I have to divide by 10 so it should be minus 4.9 meter let's take a look if that's correct and you can guess already it is in fact correct so this is um, how how this works you can by the way see here in the excel formula where we have the minus 2 to the 16th power and then the divide by 10 just what we did on the calculator here so that's the basic principle of how you work with these uh, data multi byte single byte signed and unsigned data representations in ctag Okay, so now now we have a good idea of the uh, uh, structure of CTAG data packets and how the data field encoding works. We did some with the calculator here. Now it's time to actually see how it's done in the spreadsheet. And what we'll do is we'll review um, one, two, three, four, five, six representative data types that I'm calling out here in, in six different colors and uh, we will then take a look at the uh, uh, format of the particular data word as shown in this other spreadsheet here here also color coded and then we'll look at the equation that the spreadsheet actually uses to decode now as we are doing this I won't pay attention to where in the Argos uh, packet uh, the computation grabbed the numbers from you know which sensor number we've gone over that already so we don't need to repeat that so just concentrate on the conversion process itself and I'm gonna start uh, with a very simple one we've seen that before in our calculator calculations V cap average 16 and uh, as we can see um, from from the data work definition for that that's the red one here let me go uh, find it oops yeah data work definitions vcap average 16 so we know it's uh, two bytes resolution is uh, 0 0.001 volt and it's unsigned so let's take a look uh, what the calculation for that would be and you can probably already predict that here we go it's very simple it takes the upper byte multiplies it by 2 to the 8th power and adds the lower byte value by itself as we discussed the, the values in successive bytes and then the conversion factor 0 0.001 uh, because you know our output here is in volt and the reporting was in units of 0 0.001 volt uh, straightforward enough let's look at depth min 16 minimum depth for the day um, again let's go over here let's find it our yellow one 
depth min 16. Again, two bytes, 0 0.1 meter resolution. And this time it is signed. Um, going back and let's look at the decoding of it. Depth min 16. We did that with the calculator before, remember? So it uses the if function here and it says if ag2, that is a, a higher value byte, most significant byte, if it's less than 128, remember, that means that the most significant bit is zero. That means it's a positive number. And in that case, this calculation applies ag2 times two to the eighth power again, plus ah2, right? Now, if it's larger, uh, 128 or higher, that means the most significant bit is set. So that means it is in fact a uh, negative number. We have the same general calculation, ag2 times two to the eighth power plus ah2, but then we are subtracting two to the 16th power and that's our positive to negative conversion and our divided by 10 is conversion from reporting units of 0 0.1 meter to uh, uh, display units of meters. All right, that's this one. Um, let's go to a 24 bit, that is three byte value. Here, the temperature, average temperature for the day in degrees Celsius. Um, again, let's go to uh, the definition of it. Here we go. It's three bytes in length and the units are 0 0.001 degrees Celsius and it is signed going back. Oh, we did the conversion. I believe I took a little shortcut here. Notice it was signed, but there's no if statement here. Yeah, I got a little bit lazy here, it seems. Just assuming temperature will always be above zero degrees Celsius, which is generally the case. Um, when you are, unless you're in the Arctic or Antarctic waters where it can in fact go below zero degrees Celsius. So this is a little bit sloppy. It ignores uh, the negative values and if temperature was indeed reported as negative, you would instead get here a very large positive. But um, uh, look, let's look at the fact that it is a 24 bit or three byte value. Therefore, there are three bytes that must be pulled there in v2 w2 and x2 and the most significant is multiplied by 2 to the 16th power the middle byte by 2 to the 8th power and the lowest significant of course by 1 um, the reporting units were 0 0.001 degree celsius so here we're converting to degree celsius so we are saying well times 0 0.001 so that's uh, temperature. Um, this one here is a little bit specialized, noon UTC 32. That is the noon time that is detected by the tag by looking at, using its light sensor, really its solar panel, looking at uh, um, the sunrise time and then the sunset time not really sunrise and sunset, the time at which light levels exceed a certain low threshold, which is a little bit more than moonlight in the morning, and then fall below that threshold uh, a little bit higher than full moonlight at night. And that is our local apparent noon time, and that is used uh, for uh, longitude calculations. But how is it done? This is uh, a little bit different here. Let's go to that noon UTC 32. It says second since January 1st, 1970, and it's four bytes. Why January 1st, 1970? Because that's the beginning of a Unix epoch. So in computer terms, it's sort of a standardized thing. It's unsigned. There is no negative time here. You wouldn't go be to, you know, before January 1st, 1970. Going back to um, our decoding, and we'll see something kind of interesting here, which is, this is pretty expected, you know, uh, again, four bytes, uh, the most significant this time multiplied by two to the 24th power, then two to the 16th, two to the eighth, and by one, all right. 
um, and that would be in uh, uh, seconds here now. Um, so, you know, we, well, let's go back to that. I think it was seconds here. Yeah, second since January 1st, 1970. All right. So divide, why divide by 3,600? Because I'm now going from seconds to day, uh, hours, 3,600 seconds per hour, and then divided by 24. That gives me days. So this number here um, gives days since January 1st, 1970. And then what's the BG2? BG2 plus BG2, there's an offset here. here you see BG2 is January 1st, 1970. It just gets added to it, and that gives us the correct value here. Next one we'll look at is the dark green one. It's called DSTAT8. What is DSTAT8? Let's give it a look. Here, DSTAT8, it's a tag status bit. It's what we call a bit field. So all these eight bits, which are listed here, B0 is the least significant bit, to B7, which is the most significant bit. If it's one, it means something. So if the bit zero is one, it means no noontime detected. So the light sensor couldn't detect a noontime, probably because the fish was in darkness all day long. Uh, that's the most likely explanation. And then there's other reasons, like B1 would be a clock loss occurred, or crush depth was exceeded, or release occurred, constant depth release request occurred, and so on and so forth. So it's the tag status. So how do you deal with a bit field with these eight bits? So we'll go back to um, uh, our decoder here and let's click on it and what I said is well I was again getting kind of lazy I was only decoding the least significant bit it says if k2 equals 1 which would be all zeros in the final bit of 1 then it's no noon according to our decoding table uh, let's go back to it uh, just as a reminder no noon right so if it, was, if it was the value two, then it would mean, because that's, you know, the the second least significant bit set is two, would be clock loss occurred, a four would be crush depth was exceeded. And you could also have a combination of these, like two, the bit value of bit one, plus one, no noon time detected. So three would be both no noon time detected and clock loss occurred. But my decoding, I was really only seeing um, either uh, n nothing to report or uh, no noon time detected. And so I kind of simplified my, my decoder here. Um, what else do we have? The last one we really have to look at is uh, the checksum. And that's, of course, very important, again, to, to know that there isn't a corruption in the data, you know. Maybe you, you're going to get a maximum depth record, uh, reported of, you know, 1,000 meters and you're going, oh my God, it, it's never been known that this animal is going uh, a 1,000 meter deep. Well, you certainly want to have a checksum in here to make sure it's not just a wrong reading, a corruption of the data by the satellite. And even then, a true checksum every once in a while, uh, there's a 1 in 256 chance that the true check charm isn't really true. And you can see an outlier. So you still have, uh, due to data corruption, so you still have to look for outliers. Be sure of that. But now let's look how uh, how checksum is worked with C tags. And uh, again, going here. Hang on, I think it's down here maybe. Under X, it's the last sum. Checksum, okay. It's one byte. It's an unsigned thing. Uh, this one is kind of hard to to read with the blackness, uh, blueness on it. So I'm gonna uh, just make it like a light gray for now. So 8-bit checksum, least significant 
8 bits of the ones complement of the sum of all data fields. Ah, that's kind of a mouthful. So what that simply means is you want to sum up all the um, data bytes of the packet except for the checksum byte itself. You sum them all up, you know, and then you only look at the last, the least significant 8 bits, the, the, so the, the least significant byte really, and the ones complement means you want to reverse all the ones to zeros, all the one bits and all the zero bits should become ones. That's how this really simple checksum works. And uh, with that, we'll go back to how it's being uh, uh, computed. Okay. And so what we have here, we have an if statement. And we say if AN2, which is the reported checksum, if that equals 255 minus this modulus. So the modulus of the sum of all the uh, the uh, bytes in the packet except for the checksum byte itself divide sum that divided by 256 whatever's left over is what we're looking at and that would be one byte you know because the highest value of a byte is 255 in the unsigned sense and the 255 minus this causes a flipping of all the bits all right so and if in effect the reported checksum a and two matches the computed checksum then we have we call that true the checksum is true or correct or okay it means it's a good packet and otherwise it's false all right so that's how the checksum calculation works All right, in my next step then, once I did all this, I'm try I'll do a sort again. Um, sort C to A works, expand the selection. And now I have all the trues first. These are my good data packets and the other ones are um, down there below it will be the ones that have some corruption in it. So these were all good and these were all bad. How do we have? We have 251 of them, looks like. And how many were true? 118. Yeah, uh, a little bit under 50% were good. So there must have been a little bit of rough seas where this tag was reporting from. And now we can see um, what the values are. I'm already sorted here by date, otherwise I could uh, do that again and we can now see for example the maximum depth of that tag notice it starts at 4.2 meters and then on these days following days it uh, animal at 287 meter deep was its maximum depth the following days or the following reported day uh, 333 d uh, meters and so on and let's see here, all of a sudden, maximum depth, uh, rather than being a strong positive value, is actually a negative, minus 10. Um, if I look at the average depth, uh, oops, I killed my thing here minus 10 to minus 17 meters. There's actually a little bit of bias the tag actually popped up to the surface but we do have a 10 meter bias it's not bad that is actually allowed um, because uh, this uh, has a depth sensor is 2000 meter rated and it's sort of nominal good within 1% which is 20 meters it's below that and then the bias sort of disappears after a few days so the tag popped off the animal and uh, it shed and came to the surface. And in a similar way, you can look at all your other reports. So that's how you uh, decode a data packet. We did that here for the more daily packet. You can go in 
and do that for the various other packets, uh, the, the mod SN2, which are shown here for, for a different tag. So that we saw the sensor snapshots uh, and the engineering packets and so on. In this, as a final tidbit for this video, I want to point out how conversion is actually done automatically uh, by our uh, software, that is by cconvert, to convert from uh, a .dll file created by CWatch to, to uh, decode it, physical values, and CTrack that then makes a geoposition track. And uh, cconvert and CTrack are informed by a so-called JSON file, standard scope.json. It will always be, uh, it needs to be in, in, in the folder that cconvert or ctrack resides in. And it has a bunch of uh, packet definitions. Again, we are looking at our SDPT mod daily and you can recognize some, some uh, features uh, from our work here, like the type ID is four, the name of it and some of the data fields like depth min 16 or the checksum here at the end. Um, when I then go further up before the packet definitions, there are the, uh, uh, the data field definitions like depth min 16 is one that we used in this video, depth daily minimum. You can see it's two, two bytes wide. It, it is assigned rather than an unsigned value. It has an offset of 0, 0.0 and a multiplier of 0 0.1. So as new packets are defined, or as you are possibly defining new packets and asking Desert Star to implement a new packet for you, or even do it yourself under NDA, all you really have to do is update the standard scope.json file and then the, the uh, conversion happens automatically with that. So that is uh, another thing that is available, but for your manual conversion, you're probably using the Excel uh, decoder key. Thank you very much.